General Keith Kellogg, former national security advisor and a Fox News contributor. General, you, you are the man to speak with at this time. So it's not U.S. intelligence. We're basing these these reports of Russian troop movement. And yet the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, has now told his people he thinks Wednesday is yeah. the day. What do you make of this statement? Yeah, Trish, thanks for uh, for having me on again. Look, I, I you, Understand this, generally in warfare, the first report is always wrong. But I will tell you this, we have had, this is unclassified, we've had a lot of aerial assets up. You hear the term rivet joint or J-STARS. These are aircraft that are flying the border between Ukraine and Russia. They can pick up the assembly areas, they can pick up the movement of vehicles that are moving into attack positions. That's a great indicator because if they are moving into attack positions, then they mean, that means they've got an order to proceed and to go forward. That's your key tell. And we can pick that up. We will know that. Again, and these are unclassified reports because they're picked up in the civilian uh, news media. Uh, and you can't hide airplanes that are flying. And we've put a lot of aerial assets up, a lot of these reconnaissance assets, so we know. Now, as to the exact timing, that's the reason I said the first report is always wrong. But, but bear in mind, once you put position, uh, forces in position into attack positions, they cannot stay there forever, and they'll have to get ready to move. So if they're saying the 16th, maybe you don't go on the 16th, maybe you go on the 17th or 18th. But the key tell, I, I think right now, is if you get hit with a cyber attack, you Ukraine get hit with a cyber attack early, and we locate where they put their VDV or their airborne forces, they always lead with cyber and they always lead with airborne forces. And that'll tell you where they're going and what they intend to do. Uh, General Kellogg, we're waiting to confirm those reports. Jennifer Griffin is in the Pentagon briefing room. Uh, we believe John Kirby will take to that podium a short time from now. You can see the little picture on the bottom of your screen. Uh, what would it mm -hmm. be like in this moment, General, uh, for the Pentagon, receiving that intelligence, satellite imagery, how aggressively uh, is the Pentagon, do you believe, trying to track down every movement to determine when those when the troops may be moved into attack position, considering this Wednesday, the 16th day that Zelensky is yeah. now citing? Yeah, they, they know it real time. Sandra, they when they see this. They've got real-time feeds inside the Pentagon. They can actually pull it up on their computer screens there, and the National Military Command Center in the bowels of the Pentagon would see it as well. So they will see that real-time. These, these, these aircraft, the J-STARS and the, the rivet joints and all of those, they are able to transmit that information by satellite right back to the Pentagon. So they will know it. They will get a good feed on it. And they'll be able to relay that forward to the Ukrainians. But there's not much they can do. Once Vladimir Putin makes the decision to go forward, if he's going to attack, then there's nothing we're going to do but just sit, just sit back and watch it and see where it goes. Because we have no forces in position to prevent it. They're not a NATO country. And we'll just have to see and uh, see what he does and where so he intends to go. The, we know that Germany's chancellor general is meeting with Vladimir Putin tomorrow. So you think he's going to wait for that meeting at least? Well, I was kind of hoping in the last, you know, hope of hopes that a diplomatic solution would come out of this because there's one thing he is driving to, he, Vladimir Putin. He wants Ukraine to be like Finland to the West. He wants it to be autonomous, but he also wants it not to be part of NATO. And if he gets that agreement, then he may not go. But I think it's a, we've reached a point where we haven't given him those assurances and he's going to take it into his own decision to go. You understand he's an autocrat, he's ruthless. And, he, and he'll use force when he needs to use force. And unfortunately, I think that's where we're heading to. Yeah. And generally, you look at the you look at the campaign and for, for lack of a better term, uh, this will be, by most assessments, a, a very bloody and a very swift campaign because Russia has yeah. 110,000 ground troops along the border. They've got another 15 to 20,000 um, airmen and sailors in the Black Sea ready to yeah. attack air power that is that is unmatched by by uh, Ukraine. And, and what's happening then? If this is a, a three yeah. or four or 10 day campaign and they walk up the steps of the Capitol, what's next? What is what does America do next? I think we have. Yeah, go ahead, General. Yeah, well, look, Trace, look, when you study Russia at war, they use massive forces. They will come in with overwhelming force to subdue what they want to subdue. I've always said I don't believe they want to go into the cities because cities will eat armies up. They'll eat divisions up, brigades up. But he'll go around those cities or isolate those cities. Now, Kiev may be a different, different example because that's the head of state. 
that's where the government is, and they may mm -hmm. try to neutralize that. But uh, he's going to uh, go real hard, real fast with massive amounts of force. Guys, I think yep. we